गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड सो वेलकम टू अनदर एक्साइटिंग एपिसोड ऑफ द वॉन्डरफुल लाइफ ऑफ अ ट्रेवल एक्सपर्ट टूडे वी हैव मिस्टर हेमल शाह विद अस सो हिज इंटरेस्टिंग जर्नी बिगैन इन टू थाउजेंड फाइव वेन ही ज्वाइन फ्रैंकविन एज अ स्टूडेंट एंड टूडे he is working in frankfurt as a travel and tourism trainer how exciting is that so let me just quickly add him to the show so meanwhile um, he jihil joined so Hi Himal how are you doing I'm good how are you doing I am doing good I was just about to tell our audience about your interesting journey Thank you very much So right now I just told them that you were a student at Franklin and now you are a trainer at Franklin and passing on your legacy to the you know aspiring students Absolutely right yes I am <laughs> So uh, now let them hear your journey from you only okay Sure I'll do that Yeah so are you excited Absolutely it's my first ever interview Great so you know let me just begin with my first question and uh, All right let's begin Sure so, yes we can uh, um I have, like we have we know that you have immense amount of experience in all the industries travel airlines hospitality mm-hmm. so but uh, you know travel is your main field right yes so yes. how did it all began uh well it all began when i joined franklin as a student as a franklin franklin institute as a student uh somewhere in the year 2005 uh, even i had joined franklin to be a cabin crew and uh, right. yes i did try a lot of uh, you know a lot of interviews for cabin crew but for some certain reasons i could not uh, you know it did not work for me but i knew it was not the end of a career for me or a end of path i had to alternate uh, career options hospitality and travel of course so right. that's where it began yeah so i tried kept trying uh, cabin crew hospitality and travel wherever i got a chance i kick started my career with that yeah yes right great so i'm so glad that your journey began from frankfurt Yes, for me also, because I've been really thankful to Frankfurt. Otherwise, I would not have started with hospitality, and maybe I've not been able to continue my career in travel as well. You know, okay, you understand. If I had to go into hospitality, I would otherwise had to do a three-year hospitality degree course, and then get right. into, you know, and that was not possible for me. So luckily, we had that time Frankfurt, and it was booming. Uh, as Franklin as an institute, it was very famous. Today also, it's very famous, of course. So it gave me a good opportunity, not only you know into course, but also uh, it groomed me as a as a person. You know, uh, we we had these personality development sessions, which uh, really yeah. you know, improved me as a person. I really used to fear speaking in public, so our trainers used to you know really work hard on us. so that we could you know speak in front of 10 people or you know in front of public so that really helps right. us especially in the interviews as well so that's how mm-hmm. i think uh, franklin has been uh, you know a paramount for me in my career that's really beautiful okay so um, you have completed your graduation when you joined franklin right no uh, well when i joined franklin i was uh, around 16 16 and a half just passed out of 12th and i started with franklin just like many of our other students are okay, so sure. i joined as a undergrad and uh, at that time we only had one course with franklin the diploma course okay so i when i passed out i was still an undergraduate and when i started working i was still an undergraduate so my first job uh, you know was with renaissance i was working as an undergrad okay but uh, yeah. i knew graduation was mandatory at some point of time whether i would get stuck in my career so i simultaneously continued my education so that's how i completed my uh, education graduation and currently i'm pursuing my post graduation uh, through correspondence so how 
how did you manage all of this like you were studying in franken you were doing your graduation and you were also preparing for the job so how did it all happen how did you manage all of this uh see we, it's very simple when you want to achieve something in life you will do everything possible okay so if i would have given up on my education that time maybe i would not be sitting in front of you right now because as a trainer or you know as a travel expert today many uh, you know organizations are looking for graduates minimum qualification becomes graduate i would not be in in a place where i am currently otherwise so i had to manage somehow and we all have to manage and it happens it's just you need to have that intent in you to do it right 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 that's really you know you are a very hard working person and you could juggle between so many things together so it's really inspiring yes, for us to. and for all the students right thank you um, so i believe um, you were placed uh, through franken right you got your placement by franken yeah. yes so not only uh, yes my first job was with franken of course but it is not that they only provided me with uh, you know uh, opportunities with hospitality and travel management i gave a lot of interviews for cabin crew as well prior to my hospitality and simultaneously i was kept i was keep uh, you know i was trying for uh, hospitality and travel management as well and it clicked somewhere with renaissance so renaissance was my first ever job into into this industry it's it's really great that you got uh, you know placed in such a big big company and that to with the first job so how was your role at your first job uh my role was into front office so i was okay. handling the front of the house at renaissance or renaissance as a as a brand it's a part of the married group of hotels okay so yes so my role is to look after the front of the house the check in you know customer service if the passenger customer guest needs something they would come to you so you are the the face of the of the hotel for uh, for you know for your guest so if uh, you have to be smiling all the time although, although your knees might be hurting you have been standing all day but you always have to keep smiling and you know give your utmost service to your to your guests yeah but something i'd like to add over here when i started working with renaissance i was the youngest employee at renaissance just something in the age of 17 and a half years something so i was the youngest employee that time okay you must have got pampered a lot there also <laughs> you don't get pampered trust me yeah because it's a real world <laughs> you don't get pampered they they, they are preparing right. you for everything right. if this pamper you like your parents then you'll always be in the shell right so pampering right. is what i don't do to my students and i don't expect others to pamper me as well so that that's what makes you the real person right and you know this we feel when we go in the real world then we realize okay this strictness was really important yes so today also when i you know i take classes at frankfen i don't allow students to who have come to my class late for a reason today if i allow them tomorrow they'll be late in their work as well and at that time it will pinch them a lot so it's better it pinches them right now okay if they want to think bad about me it's okay but it's for their own benefit so that's how i learned and that's how i want my students also to learn right and because of trainers like you like experts like you you know franken students is always they are very successful in their careers thank you very much so it's it's not just me it's we as a team who you know works towards achieving that right right so uh, you you have worked, you have experience uh, you know uh, in india as well as in abroad right yes i worked in dubai so how about that okay great that we yeah. uh, franken has a center over there you know yeah and i know that. i'm sure you must be knowing that yeah yes of course so yes uh, after i worked with renaissance uh, mm-hmm. i had an opportunity to work with the five star hotel in dubai the name of the hotel was jebel ali resort uh, golf resort and spa that time so it's a very it's a very huge property which has uh, it has own beach it has, it has its wow. own golf course then uh, you know it has its own stallion then a lot of uh, you know shooting activities so if you want to do shooting you can do that so it's a very huge property so yes it was a very good experience because 
I was working in a very huge property. First of all, I was working with uh, multicultural people or multinationals, people from uh, different different nationalities, and right. it was a diff- complete different experience because I had never stayed alone in any place more than a week. So I was always mm-hmm. stayed with my parents, with my sister, and suddenly it was like no one around me. So yeah, it was difficult, but I made sure I will not give up. I did. maybe i was quite upset initially but uh, yeah but then i always you knew i what i wanted to do in life so i, I only chose no one forced me to, to go to dubai right so i had to be prepared for right. it absolutely so but i'm sure you must have enjoyed a lot in dubai because now you're telling me that the property was so beautiful and there were so many activities i'm sure you must have done all of those so as an employee you get to enjoy everything at the property because if you don't know what you know what kind of activities are there and you are not able to enjoy how will you tell your guests about them and how will you make them do those activities because at the end if you tell them you are going to bring business to the to the organization right so we had our own benefits which we could use we could use the restaurants in the hotel we could use activities as an employee so we had these opportunities plus if you are staying in dubai the the company the organization provides you transportation to go to major city centers like the malls the you know you get discounts on going to safaris and so on so all these were added benefits and i never used to spend a single money from my pocket that time so i used to get a lot of tips that's the most interesting and you know beautiful perk yeah it is a beautiful perk because accommodation is taken care of then right. your transportation is taken care of food is taken right. care of laundry is taken care of So what are you spending on? You're just spending on yourself, right? And that spending, that amount that I was spending was coming from tips. So salary was completely saved, right, for that period. That's really, you know, it's very tempting to listen about all those stories, and we are like, okay, we should also do this. It you should at least once in your lifetime because when you work abroad, you need to, you will get to know a lot of other people. Right now, I only know. you might be known, only knowing people from india our culture how what are our uh, festivals and so on but my roommate right. initially was an egyptian okay now this is really interesting so egyptians we understand are 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 people who follow islam right but there are many egyptians who follow two religions christianity as well as islam so my roommate used to uh, you know used to follow both so once he was following ramzan that was understood and during christmas he was making christmas tree in our in my in our pad so i was like what are you doing why are you making christmas tree but like, it's my festival i was like you are a muslim right but like, no we follow both festivals because we many of the egyptians we follow two religions at a time so that is that was really interesting and i made yeah it's actually friends. very interesting and new for yeah. you know for me to listen i mean this is something i've never heard of this correct so it is not known to many people yeah right so we all, we always assume that people from the arab countries are always following islam so it is not not the case always right, right. so you i had the chance to make friends with uh, people from different nationalities so today also mm-hmm. they are in touch with me maybe they, maybe oh, they are live right now awesome. seeing me also i don't know but yeah it's it's a memory of lifetime working in dubai wow that's really interesting <laughs> Yes. I am little envious of you right now. Like you got such great opportunities, but then that was your hard work. Yes, it is hard work. Otherwise, they would not have hired first of all, right? Right. You don't just hire. <laughs> yes. Right. So uh, this was all about you know your hospitality uh, time, right? And so yes. then you had this immense amount of experience in travel as well. So how did you switch? So I had my own reasons to come back to India. so when i okay. came back from dubai to india um, i thought of continuing my journey with the hospitality industry but then mm-hmm. i somewhere you know i was not feeling too good that you know i joined frankfen to be somewhere in the aviation now i'm into hospitality so I, my aim was always tra- travel or aviation okay so okay. i kept trying after i came back to india I took a break for some months ultimately i you know a uh, good opportunity i got a good opportunity to work with uh, the reservations for singapore airlines so that's when my travel career started 
uh, it is a very interesting journey because i've learned a lot about travel okay now people when i say travel they think it is a travel agent it is not only just travel agent that's the common myth yes. right like that's among all, all the all everyone people think that uh, travel industry okay it's like just booking the tickets it's just booking But a ticket that no. is what people think it is yeah. not not that always it's up to you what you want to do okay so yes okay. initially i also started with reservations and ticketing so it was okay. a completely initially a back office job you are sitting uh, on a computer and working but right. doing that i was not handling just customers from india i was handling customers from different parts of world i used to handle customers from uk singapore new zealand mm -hmm. australia so i used to make reservations for them as well again understanding every customer every national is very important when you are handling them either face to face or over the phone so we need to know i always had to know that you know can i build a rapport with that customer or not okay, okay. so when you are talking to a customer over the phone making a rapport or building a rapport with a customer becomes very difficult and that is something i took it as a challenge i said i can ace it right and that's what i did so i knew with whom i can build a rapport with whom i cannot build a rapport so a yeah, very good example the southeast asians like the singaporeans or thai people they are very straight to the point they will never build okay. they not like to talk anything out of topic so you cannot build rapport okay. with them but with aussies and kiwis and british people they love talking so when you when i used to make reservations for them i used to do a lot of side talks with them as well yeah like you know how's the weather why are you going to singapore are you going for work are you going for vacation different different uh, reasons so you know while i'm just doing my work i'm making the customer feel very comfortable as well so that was the idea of building a rapport right so that's why i did right yeah. right so when you empathize with the customer you know they also feel welcomed and they also feel good about it and they will come back to you definitely after that absolutely they remember your name also many times so when they call you back again in the reservations they want to speak with you only so that is something you know that really excites you about your job you know that a specific customer wants to speak to him alone only that makes a really big difference right right so um, so you have worked with like good and you know big travel brands yes right like thomas cook thomas cook american express mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah. so the shift from the airline reservations and coming to a proper travel management company or what some people call it as travel agency okay mm -hmm. was a big shift for me it was i thought 10 times before doing that shift because i knew i was moving out of you know my comfort zone now i was working for that airline for good 3 3 and a half years now i had to move to a completely different background okay but that shift for me was very important because as an airline staff yes i had a lot of knowledge but limited to that airline right now i'm working for when i wanted to gain, gain more knowledge so when i wanted to you know have more knowledge i had to come out of my comfort zone maybe start somewhere at a competitive at a lower lower grade but i was okay with it because i knew the kind of knowledge that i have i will easily go up okay so i started working with thomas cook uh, where i used to handle corporate clients okay, okay. not only doing the reservations and uh, ticketing for them but handling their entire travel management and you we, we had an opportunity to travel with the clients as well so when you are mm -hmm. handling yes so i used to handle clients like reliance then uh, mumbai indians the ipl team oh my god that's really yes great. so when we used to do hand, i used to handle uh, sing, uh, you know mumbai indians wherever they were traveling we are the, their travel and hospitality partners as well so if i am handling i would be traveling with them although i may not be able to you know sit with them but i would be in the same hotel doing my work wherever i am required yeah so i had a chance to travel domestic international in my travel in my travel career so that is something it is not always again i'm telling students it is not always a 
back office job that is something right. and it is like it is itself it's like you know being treated like a celebrity <laughs> yes you get you there are perks of course yeah right there will be perks but yeah you are working while you are traveling so but i'm still happy with it at least i'm tra- getting but into but you know you get to travel while you are working so you know you're not spending you from your pocket side, sorry you're not spending from your pocket right exactly. that's the best part and you're still, uh, getting to see all, around the world free yes. of cost and you're still earning you're getting your salary and you're still traveling that's the best part of the travel industry you know that is the best part now uh, people as i told you you also said that people think it's just a sitting job it is not now even if i'm not traveling for work you know i still mm-hmm. have an option i can offer discounted tickets okay these are called id tickets oh. or uh, yes you get good discounts there are there's a travel industry rate for uh, hotels that you can avail that i i have availed many a times so the travel discount is like 40% off 50% off on your hotel accommodation wow depending on hotel to hotel so i'll give you an example i traveled to thailand to phuket I stayed in Amari. The average rate room night will be what, fifteen thousand a night. Same I got it for seven thousand five hundred a night. So that is straight fifty wow. percent discount that you get. So that is these kind of perks you enjoy being into travel industry. And this is something that I'm sure many of us don't want to, you know, forgo or do not want to leave it. Just thinking yeah. that it's a travel agency job. <laughs> Have, we have still we have an opportunity. We will never miss out on such opportunity. Um, not now. I'm I'm satisfied with what I have done, so I don't want to go back. But yeah, no, I mean, I I mean all the students who are you know still skeptical uh, skeptical about their you know career. Yeah. Uh, now it must have been you know clear to them that okay we, the perks are get, really good. We get a lot of students. We get a lot of students. who say nahi we only want to be a cabin crew we don't want to you know travel job who wants to do a travel job the hospitality is still better but we'll not go, we are not looking for travel job then i have to explain them i tell my experiences i share my experiences so that is when they understand it is not just sitting on a chair and working in front of computer for 9 hours it is more than that okay so that is what i think i have been doing for last one and a half year or almost two years with frankfin now so that was my idea yes now i'll tell you one thing what i do with my students whenever i start a new class i don't start teaching okay i tell them i ask them questions why did you join frankfin what is your idea most of them will say okay i want to be a cabin crew then i ask what if you are not able to get through what you wanted to achieve you want wanted to be a cabin crew did not work out so they have no answers many of them don't have answers many of them have answers okay so i try to you know mold them if you don't have a you're not able to get through a role of a cabin crew you have ready options available which you which you're already learning you don't need to think of doing post graduation at the moment and doing something else like a ca or something in your career you can still pursue your career into customer service so that is something right. i always believed in doing and i'm lucky that uh, you know i've got a chance to work with frankfin and i'm able to deliver what i wanted to do with my students right and you know that's the best part of learning soft skills is that you you uh, you know those soft skills are used in almost every job it's not only about aviation you, you those those will come handy in all the part of your career and you know you can use it's like it's a, it will get built in you Yes, so it will. That's the best part of learning soft and skills, it, and it will remain with you for your life. So it's not right. only that it's in your professional career, in your professional life, it will remain with you in your personal life as well. So it will mold right. you as a person. Right, right. So, uh, Hemal, you have so much of experience in all the fields. So, where did you enjoy the most? See, every experience is was very unique. Uh, you know, I, <laughs> I love uh, the, the part that I lived in Dubai. but if you look at my overall yeah. career but my my major career has been into travel so travel is something right. that is very close to me uh, so i love the travel industry and uh, you know today also if i do a lot of uh, counseling a lot of people come to me saying you know i am planning to go on a vacation 
uh, where should i go kidhar jao should i go to europe now people say europe matlab where in europe they say europe matlab like, europe is a continent my friend where in europe you want to go so they don't have a clue where exactly in europe they want to go then we, i have to ask them questions to make them understand what is that you are you know what is the place that you are trying to visit then i will give them okay. options and these are the options to you okay now as a travel expert i have uh, a lot of so we work in a lot of codes it's like you are working as a coder trust me if you are working on a system like a gds amadeus or galileo whatever you you work on we use codes for every city there is a code there every airline there is a code so it it becomes so uh, you know it it is now become a part of my life so today also if someone says you know i want to uh, what is the code of dubai i will know by heart what is the code of dubai so uh-huh. every it's code you will remember so by heart so much more than a ticketing job yeah it's more than a ticketing job so that okay. is about codes then you have visa knowledge about most of the countries that you are as an indian if i want to travel to certain country do i need a visa okay what kind of visa do i need now a big mistake is what people do is everyone wants to travel to europe okay now when they want to travel to europe they have no knowledge about how to book tickets and so on they go on any travel portal okay they say okay there's a flight available via london going to paris let's book it is very cheap and they go ahead and book it and they later realize that they need two visas to go to to travel on british airways okay one is for the france that is okay. uh, the schengen visa plus since you are you are transiting the uk you will require uk transit visa as well so all this knowledge common man does not have it yeah right you may, so all this knowledge comes from a travel expert only so that will come from a travel professional that's why mm-hmm. industry will always require people will always require travel experts and people who say the travel industry is over it is you know because of covid there no one's traveling and so on it happens in every industry right it's not only affected the travel industry it's affected every industry now uh, job cuts happens in uh, it every year so it does not happen in the travel industry every year so that it happens one of cases like covid it is a very exception it's a big exception that has happened so and it will people will travel now people are doing revenge travel if you look at now Sorry. people were that one or two were years at home. yeah people were were home for one and a half two years now people want to travel for revenge <laughs> i will travel whatever happens now i have taken yeah. a vaccine i will travel so right. travel is going to boom at every point of time i'll give you a very good a very good example how the travel is going to boom in india india never had an uh, you know cruise liners coming to india we never had many cruise liners in india now our government for the last 8 9 years has been coming with a lot of sea ports which we, which we don't know okay so it's going to boom the cruise liner industry in india so there are going to be a lot of vacancies coming in in the next few years wow so the travel is only going to boom in india yeah so that is something that you should always consider because from a travel you can go to any other industry today i may be working for travel for a travel management company like thomas cook or american express you see my career i have moved to a corporate sector as well from there so there are opportunities that will come in your way do not lose hope is what i would say to everyone right right so uh, um, like after so many years of traveling now you are a trader at frankfin and you know passing on your legacy so how did this switch happen uh somewhere i knew that i wanted to do training at some point of time because um, when i was uh, in my initial career with you know in the reservations and so on i had done few refreshers for my you know new joiners and so on so i knew you know i can talk good in front of people i can you know i can present myself in a very good way and now since i had an experience of so many years plus of so many industries i i thought it was the right time for me to jump into training okay so that's why i took that jump so when i took that jump people told me it's too early to go into training what are you doing in training a lot of relatives told me why training you are doing very good in uh, you know into operations but i wanted to 
you know make myself uh, you know a very successful person into training at some point so if i'm able to do it at a very young age if i do training right now maybe in the next few years i will grow further into training right yeah i don't want to go back again doing the same thing i will always want to grow so that should be a perception about your career always growing either a lateral growth or a vertical growth right so i always look at always there yes okay so this was so much of an inspirational conversation and i'm sure everyone is inspired by you and now let's know okay. something more about you and have some fun okay So, how about a game of Never Have I Ever? All right. Okay, let's do it. I know that game. Ah, <laughs> uh, so you have coffee, right, with you? Yes, I do. Thank you. Oh, that's great. Ah, uh, so I'll ask you a Never Have I Ever question, and if you have done it, you'll have to take a sip of it. Okay. Sure. Okay. So, ready for some fun? Yes, absolutely. So prepared few questions for you so that we know more about Himal Shah. Okay. 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 So here Let's comes hear. my first question. Yeah. Never have I ever been on a cruise ship. Yes, I have been. So, um, so on you, a trip to Singapore. Yeah. So when okay. uh, I went on a trip to Singapore. so from a singapore we i went on a 3 day cruise so before that i had never been on a cruise for my first time ever so for me as a cruise it was like okay it will be a ship all right but mm-hmm. over here it was a completely different world when i entered a ship so it was just not just a five star hotel in inside a ship but there was a, a water park there was a small golf course a mini golf course then uh, it had multiple swimming pools it had uh, restaurants uh, amphitheaters inside it then they had a rock climbing uh, thing inside the uh, inside the in, inside the cruise itself rock that was something very unique <laughs> yes yeah but i could not do it because i was too old for it so it was basically for children so yeah it, it, at least it was it was there so that, that is something you know uh, yeah. that you will find on a cruise line now yeah Okay. Here comes my next question. Never have I ever seen a famous person on the street. I'm sure you have seen multiple on, you know, traveling while traveling, but you know, it's a different experience when you see them on street. So in Mumbai, you see uh, if you go to town, you get to see, you know, film stars every now and then. So, yeah, when I was working in a hotel, I should see when I was working to travel, that time of course I had to uh, experience a lot of uh, you know actors cricketers and so on plus i have one of my friends she herself is an actress so she is into oh, wow. uh, yes. so she herself is an actress so you know we get to see them every now and then so it's it's not a big deal for us but yeah initially in a okay. career it was yeah so i was a kind of a okay. salman khan fan so i used to go okay. to you know uh, galaxy apartment That's initially tough. yeah so okay. we all have done that right if we are living in mumbai then definitely everyone is like stopping by shahar khan's house and you know then galaxy yeah everyone's a fan of some some actor i was never a yeah. shahar khan fan but salman khan fan always okay and by town you mean south bombay That's south bombay yeah that yeah. to everyone right. sobo is what we call it yeah <laughs> right so did you take a sip of this for your coffee for this question i did i did oh i'm sure these all questions you know you will you will finish the cup very soon uh, hopefully you have uh, that means you have a lot of questions to ask okay so next question never have i ever lied about my age no never never felt never. the need to i had a for some reason people always thought that i was uh, bigger than uh, you know uh, older than my my age for some reason i had to correct them i'm not so old just because i have some gray hair does <laughs> not mean i'm old so that was something yeah so i never lied i corrected about my age to people okay so okay no sip for this then <laughs> yeah no sip for this 
Okay, next. Never have I ever received an anonymous gift. Uh, I would like to take a sip, but not a gift, but a letter. And that's yeah. mysterious. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I didn't have the never name have of that I ever. And... Okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Tell. No problem. So we are, you came. know, very interested to listen to the story if you are ready to tell. <laughs> so that letter never came to me directly. It went to my mother. So I was playing. Oh I was God. in my society, and the letter was delivered by some girl to my mother, and then that is how I got it. And then I assumed <laughs> who sent that letter. I'm going to tease you for this. <laughs> maybe that girl may be listening right now. Hopefully, she's married. Oh. <laughs> Okay, this is really interesting. But yeah, next let's move to the next question. Never have I ever been screamed at by a customer at the job. Okay. Uh, not because of my mistake. So I would not say okay. yes. Customers do scream at you, but not because mm -hmm. of my own mistakes. So I, I would never make a blunder. First of all, I would make sure I was ultra cautious. about you know handling a customer okay because i know if i was a customer and if someone makes a blunder you know it's going to i would how would i react so i don't want it the customer to react for my mistakes in that way so yeah it, they screamed but not because of my mistake it was a general frustration about the the issue that they had right 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 okay um next question never have i ever stayed up all night i'm sure you must have done that in your job almost every weekend so especially you want to have weekend. the whole cup <laughs> actually this cup will be while i have to ask for another cup because every weekend <laughs> we are right? Okay. right from saturday night onwards uh, to sunday early mornings especially during the covid period we did a lot of binge watching yeah right from my watching series like money heist god knows what all So we have done. I think we have finished every other, uh, you know, every other series on Netflix in the last one and a half year. Now we have nothing to see. So yeah, <laughs> okay. and plus, I'm sure there are many coming. Yeah, hopefully there are many, many uh, upcoming seasons of it. So I'm yeah. waiting for them. Correct. Yeah. So yes, I have stayed awake uh, for many, for a lot of period, a lot of nights and maybe. Coffee helps. <laughs> coffee, yes, it helps. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. So here comes my next question. Never have I ever watched a movie alone. Yes. Kal watch. Okay. In a theater, so, right? In a theater, next to uh, you know uh, a old couple sitting next to an old couple. Okay. It is something that I like to share. Uh, so I had a friend ditched and uh, never came for the movie. So I had two tickets. and i ended up going alone to the theater i sold one of the ticket to someone and uh, so i saw the movie alone and it was a bad idea to see the movie alone because the couple next sitting next to me the old auntie was crying during the movie and i had to give my handkerchief to her while she was crying <laughs> so that's again hospitality maybe <laughs> did you also shed one or two tear for that movie <laughs> uh well i am a kind of a emotional person but uh, not in movies not no i will not cry looking at a movie okay so you know that's not in happening in the real world yeah luckily i knew that time <laughs> but many of us did cry you know because of that movie that's what shahrukh khan is famous for right he can make you cry <laughs> that's okay. the kind of woman you should see in the 90s Right, right, right. Okay, so here comes my last question, and I'm sure our cup is almost, you know, at the end. Almost, of... yes. Yeah. So never have I ever been on a solo trip. Um, solo trip? Yes, I have been. Okay. Right, one before uh, joining Frankfurt as an employee. Mm -hmm. So I had decided I will take a break before I join any new organization because it will be coming. to uh, it was become too much for me so i went on a solo trip to to kasol to manali and so on wow. luckily, luckily my wife permitted so i had to take a permission from my wife to go 
<laughs> when i went she, you know her friends started uh, you know asking how did you allow her to travel allow him to travel alone so so she is very cool so luckily she did allow me and she even now she is okay if i travel although she will show me eyes but at the end she would allow me to travel so that's that's something that she is okay with he knows and that you are travel expert yes and so, so when i say solo i never stay in a hotel i don't waste my money on okay. spending in a hotel i look for home stays i look for camps or i would look for hostels now hostels are not those college or school hostels these are nothing less than a good hotel yeah so if i can spend a night for 800 rupees a night why would i spend 3000 4000 on a hotel accommodation anyways i'm just going to the hotel to spend a night to change clothes to take a shower most of the day i'm out so that's how people yeah, travel that when you are when you want to explore you know and go to the you know mix right. with the culture and everything so that that, that time two. when that at that time when you want to stay in the you know home stays and everything correct plus you get to you know meet people from other other cities other countries as well and you share experiences right. yeah you you may create a contact and uh, next time if you are trying to visit a particular country you may find that person uh, you know hosting you as well so i do couch surfing as well the couch surfing is something that you should i strongly recommend to people as well because today right. travel has you know there are a lot of options how you can travel how you can save your money so that's what right. i do that's what i teach my students as well at franklin and plus this is a new upcoming opportunity in the travel industry and you know you can build up your own business you can you know have yeah like vacations and... you can manage properties right. today right. yes right so you can today and manage all uh, is for soft skills right only soft skills you should know how to manage yes. people how to speak yes. that is what you need yes. so if you Definitely. are a good salesman i'm sure you can ace that and you can be your own boss right so this was the end of the game and we could we could know more about you so and we are almost at the end of the show and any any advice you want to give to the you know upcoming uh, students you know aspirants and who are looking forward to build a career in these industries especially the travel industry yeah so the one thing i would like to tell you is don't listen to people who tell you all negative about you know the industry that you have chosen you need to have uh, you know you have own perception about the industry that you want to join and make sure if you decide to join that industry you are always positive because there will be a lot of people who will tell you negative things about what you are trying to do because maybe they don't want you to do do that thing they want you they see you in some other role okay but if you are able to convince your parents that yes i want to do this i will you know be able to excel in this just stay positive stay focused and do not lose hope uh, because after every night there is a day so it will always be a good day for you right right so yeah so that was really great advice so this now here comes my very last question to you and how would you define your life and i mean how would you define the wonderful life of a travel expert mr hemal shah if i um, ask you you know to so you are asking me about my journey so my journey yeah. uh, overall was very good yes it had it was, it was not always smooth but yes then what is the point of having a journey when it is always a straight path in front of you there right. you will always have blind spots you will have your you know hurdles coming in way but that really makes you you know a very strong person if you are able to manage those hurdles manage those blind spots and go ahead always look ahead so that's that is what will give you a very good uh, professional and personal life so yeah my journey has been very much uh, amazing till now and i'm sure i will always uh, be limitless i always believe in being limitless so i don't believe in stagnancy if i feel i'm becoming stagnant then i know what to do next so you need to always be on your toes always right right right, right. 
thank you himal it's been great talking you to you much. and one thing i lo- i learned from you was no matter how many challenges life throws at you you always come up strong and successful right we never have a option we have to if you want to survive yes, definitely that's how you get strong yes you do that's right. how you do and that's how you become successful definitely so at last i want to thank you himal thank you for you know inspiring us and i hope all the students must be very inspired and motivated by your journey and now they are more clear about this travel industry and you know they are more confident to make a good career in this industry yes thank you for having me thank and i'm hoping for- that everyone gets gets to know a bit about the industry that is something very very much needed thank you for having right. me thank you so much and thank you all the viewers who were here with us and listen to this beautiful journey and um, i hope uh, you guys enjoyed it so this was the uh, this was the second last episode of this series and we'll be up- upcoming with the more new good series for you guys thank you so much bye himal thank you thank you have a good day ahead